And it's six, so let's get started. Uh, so welcome everyone to the uh, to the Vancouver Power BI and Modern Excel User Group Meetup for Thursday, April 8th. Um, today we are uh, glad to have uh, Al Chen joining us. He's going to be teaching us how to uh, build a VBA script to fill values down. Uh, before we jump into that, though, I do want to uh, just quickly go through and uh, provide some messages from our sponsors. So here is the uh, the sort of layout of what we're going to be doing today. Um, we Our team's meeting opened about 15 minutes ago. It's now 6, so we're into the welcome and overview section. And uh, around 6.05-ish, we should get to our feature presentation. And then uh, Al's got an hour-ish um, to, to go and do his presentation. That's uh, obviously not, uh, not locked in, so it'll be up to how long Al needs and how many questions you all have for them. Um, before we get into that, though, I just want to, uh, to go through and throw out a, a big shout out to the sponsors that make this stuff all possible. Uh, Excel Guru uh, is my company and, and Skillwave as well is our training division for, um, for Power BI and, uh, and Excel BI related tasks. Uh, our company puts these in or hosts these on, helps uh, coordinate the speakers and whatnot. Um, so uh, we just wanted to, uh, to throw out an acknowledgement there. Microsoft obviously helps us out an awful lot as well. Um, that's, uh, they provide the software to make this stuff happen, and uh, uh, by virtue of recognizing me as an MVP um, is how we can actually put these things on. So uh, we help, we appreciate that. Uh, finally, the last thing I just want to throw out is that um, at Excel Guru, we do have a, a really cool Excel add-in, uh, which is called Monkey Tools, to help you build better data models faster. Uh, if you're interested in seeing some of the cool stuff that happened, I was actually just in a meetup last night with the Perth user group. It is on my YouTube channel now about building slowly changing dimensions, about 40 minutes of uh, educational stuff of how to do it the hard way, and then one minute with Monkey Tools. So if you're interested, uh, you can check that out on my YouTube channel. Uh, our next meetups that we have coming up, in a couple of weeks, uh, we have Joseph Yates, our normal uh, guy that does our, our presentations of what's new in Power BI, gets the full hour to go and teach us how to build financial statements with Power BI and DAX. Uh, we're super excited to say that we do have our, our speaker that is going to be uh, leading off the what's new in Power BI track for that presentation, and it's going to be Yana is going to be coming back and, uh, and filling in for us, doing a cameo appearance uh, we haven't seen her uh, in person on these things since about a couple months after she moved down to Microsoft, so we're super excited to welcome her back. Our next Excel track uh, session that we have on May 6th is going to be presented by Oz du Soleil. Uh, this is going to be Cooking with Oz, a lesson in Excel creativity. And what we want to do is we just want to quickly go through and talk about that one um, here because the way that this one works is uh, last month we asked a bunch of people if they would go and fill out a survey to pick up the mystery ingredients that Oz needs to put together for his session. So what's going to happen here is we're now going to unroll live the different things, Oz, that you are going to have to cook up into one solution here. Just uh -oh. as a reminder, yeah, this is going to be fun stuff. So just a reminder for everybody here. This is not going to be a practical business solution. We've tried to pick weird and wonderful things to make this hard for Oz and come up with something really strange. So um, the, the whole session here that we're going to do is, is Oz is going to get these magic ingredients. He's going to try and put them together, and he's going to share with us the creative journey of what he built and how he actually thought about putting these things together in weird and wonderful ways. And if there's one thing I can count on with Oz, He's going to come up with some weird, wonderful ideas. That's what's going to make this entertaining. So, uh, so here we go. Oz, are you ready for these? I'm ready. All right. Here's your first one. Uh, we asked everybody if they would please pick one function that you need to use, and the, the overwhelming winner in this particular one here was the floor function. Okay, so that's the first one that you get to play with. <laughs> okay. All right. We also oh. asked for people to pick a specific feature, and, uh, and the feature that we end up landing on for this one here is data validation. But not just any data validation. You don't get to use like the lists and stuff like that that's normal. We want you to use the uh -huh. text length rule for data validation. Okay? Okay. I can see how you might put those together, but we're going to make this a little bit harder. Because the next thing that we got in this was we gave the readers another choice of a feature or a function, their choice. And overwhelmingly, people chose naturally dynamic arrays. So you get to go uh -huh. and throw your dynamic arrays into this as well. And then... Just to make things more interesting, this was the, the sort of survey as we gave you guys all three different options that we wanted to put together, but this is where I got to come in and actually throw in my own little curveball to make this even more interesting and exciting. So surprise, Oz, you get one more. I want you to also add in some emojis into this. Emojis in Excel because it's yeah. got to happen, right? Th that's a curveball. Yeah. So 
These are the four <laughs> magic ingredients that you got to work with, Oz. We want to see at least one of every one of these things in the solution that you're going to build up. I'm All sure right. you're going to throw in some other secret sauce and everything else as well, but, uh, but these are the ingredients that we're looking for. So... We now know what Oz is going to be working with. We hope that all of you will join us on May 6th. Yeah, Oz, go ahead. Yeah, and I invite other people to give it a shot. See what it's like. Actually, that's a good point, right? I mean, you know, this is uh, this is kind of a challenging thing, and I know that you've done this kind of stuff in the, in the past, and it takes a lot of time to come up with uh, the background of how you're going to put them together and trying a yeah. few things and, and seeing something that's not – like completely contrived, right? Um, right? So yeah, I mean, we will throw it out there and throw it out as a challenge. Anybody else mm-hmm. that wants to give it a shot, give it a go. And uh, and you know what? We can have some time uh, after Oz has shown his presentation. If anybody has one that they want to share, um, we'd love to to look at it and see what you can do with it too. Yeah. So and, and yeah. you know, if I could just be brief about how this idea came from when I was in art school and seeing students use the equipment or the materials wrong deliberately and it gave them a greater intimacy or a sense of how to use this stuff right and so now this is a a a challenge to go backwards there is no need that's calling for a solution here's a solution that's looking for a need and the result might not be anything useful it might be but it's more about the activity of digging in deeper than we normally would. There you go. We all know people can do things wrong with Excel, but we don't actually know how many actually deliberately try to do things wrong with Excel, do we? <laughs> so, all right. Any rate, this is going to be a fantastically interesting session. It will always be lively when Oz is involved. I can guarantee that. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Oz, you got a month to play around with this thing and come up with something fantastic. I can't wait to see what actually happens here. So, Beautiful. Uh, so the uh, the meetup, I uh, believe, if it's not open now, it will be open shortly for uh, for people to subscribe. So please uh, subscribe, and we hope to uh, to see you there. Uh, the last couple of things I want to cover off here um, next week on Monday, uh, I am opening up a or I am actually starting off my next uh, section of my self service BI boot camp on Fairwinds or Fairwinds man, where am I on Skillwave? Jeez, that was the old 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 company way back in the day. It's been a long day. Um, on Skillwave, uh, I'm going to be leading off my uh, self-service BI boot camp. This is a uh, over 33-hour program of training and coaching complete with uh, Ask Me Anything sessions. We do two-hour sessions every month, so there's up to about 56 hours of training here I think that you can actually get involved with. If you're interested in looking at how to actually use uh, Excel and Power BI together, um, that's what this thing is all about. Please check out the link at the bottom. It is not too late to register. We would love to have more people for it. Um, you can check out the reviews on the page. It's got some rave reviews, and uh, we're super proud of it, and I hope to see some uh, some more people there. The last thing I want to throw out is um, we are always looking for speakers. If you are interested in speaking for the uh, Power BI user group, for uh, Vancouver Power BI and Modern Excel user group, whether that be in the Excel track or in the Power BI track, Drop us a note here um, at the fill out the survey at xlguru.ca slash speak at Vanpug. Uh, we would love to have you. We'll get in touch. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that's exactly what Al did for the session tonight is, uh, you know, Al's a, a first time speaker for us. We're super, super uh, happy to have him on board. And uh, at this point in time, I'm actually going to um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn the floor over to Al because it's his turn to walk through and show us something that. We haven't actually seen on here before. We, we've seen using Power Query to fill down. We've, we've seen all kinds of Power Query stuff. Um, but we haven't seen too much in VBA, and we certainly haven't seen it running on a Mac. That's definitely different. And I think you're also going to play around with Google Sheets, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct here, Al. So um, if you want to uh, share your screen for us and, uh, and unmute, let's, let's get you on here. All right. Can everyone see my screen? I'll zoom. If you, I, can, I can see it. Yep, looks good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank. Thanks everyone for uh, showing up tonight. And I, uh, yeah, like Ken said, I was um, just kind of watching the meetup like a couple months ago, and I didn't even realize that uh, I guess the the meetup was open to speakers. And I happened to just finish writing this script um, in VBA and in Google Apps Script. And I was like, oh, maybe they might find this interesting. And um, I wasn't sure because I, I did I did notice that the content on this meetup is a little different from the stuff I typically work on. 
but you know, always good to expand your minds and horizons. So figured I'd shoot uh, kind of kind of note and see if it'd be interesting. And so hopefully it's interesting for all of you. But um, if not, uh, blame Ken. <laughs> and I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, this is a. Uh, this is the... I, I just want to say I will fully accept that blame, and uh, and you know for for anybody that's unhappy with it, um, you know the the joke is on this. We'll always give you a full refund, right? So that's uh, that's the deal. So anyway, I also yeah. think it's interesting, Al, to look at these, particularly when we uh, when we see these things, because um, you know there's multiple ways to do everything in Excel, and and as Oz just said, you know sometimes we break things deliberately. Uh, when I look at stuff like Google Apps, I'm like, boy, I don't play with that. So I think it's it's a cool thing to always see this. So I'm really excited to see it. Let's let's see what you got. Cool. Yeah. Um, so let's get started. I'll just do a quick background about myself and uh, how I got to where I am. Started my career as, at Google as a financial analyst. That's kind of where I cut my teeth um, learning Excel, primarily doing financial modeling, um, financial planning and analysis. So doing a lot of BVA, month and close, that kind of stuff. And just learned all about how to use Excel, pivot tables, got a little bit into macros, all that kind of stuff. Um, so after five plus years at Google, kind of got the startup bug and was working on my own startups, was doing Excel freelance consulting for a while. So building, again, financial models, dashboards, just random little tools in Excel for my clients. Um, yeah, this part of my life, I was kind of like trying a little bit of everything. I was doing professional basketball. I was trying to become a professional basketball player. Um, almost made the uh, the NBA G League team in South Dakota, the Sioux Falls Sky Force, but for better or worse, it didn't work out. So I continued with my Excel journey. And in 2018, I uh, joined the team here at Coda. That's uh, where I currently work. Been here for about three years. And most of my time here is building templates and solutions, which is kind of in line with my experience um, as a freelancer and also just building stuff in Excel my, uh, my entire career. Um, to give you some background about my Excel and Google Sheets work, um, I have a blog. It started off uh, as a as kind of like a online store. I was playing around with e-commerce back in like 2010, 2011, selling Excel keyboard shortcut uh, Excel keyboard covers with Excel shortcuts on them, and that kind of turned into an Excel blog where I continued to write about Excel shortcuts and tips. Um, just random things that I think about that will hopefully hopefully make people more productive in Excel. Um, I was an early teacher on Skillshare. I, I teach a class on Skillshare called Excel for the real world, among some other classes. And I have over 30,000 students who have taken my class there. And then finally, I started a podcast during the pandemic, kind of like one of my pandemic hobbies, I guess you could say. It's called uh, Dear Analyst. Um, it's on all the major podcast platforms. And there's also an associated LinkedIn newsletter. Um, where I just kind of publish the show notes. And I think the newsletter has around 14,000 subscribers, mostly just data analysts, software engineers, um, data engineers, that kind of stuff. And uh, lo and behold, Oz was one of my guests a couple episodes ago. So trying to get all the big time hitters um, in the Excel world on my podcast and newsletter. So yeah, definitely check these things out if they're interesting. Um, a big, the big caveat here is I'm not an expert in Power Query and Power BI. And the main reason is because, as you can see here, I'm on a Mac. Um, I, I have a, a PC that I use once in a while, but most of my day-to-day -day work is on a Mac. And you can't you can't bring up the Power Query editor on a Mac. You can run queries, I believe, but you can't run Power Query um, in the latest versions of Excel on the Mac. And so a lot of my work in Excel these days is all the how can I make Excel more accessible, um, is Excel the right tool for certain people that are using Macs? And I remember, actually, I got into this topic a little bit with uh, Oz during our podcast together on Dear Analyst. Um, so I'm all about, always about thinking about how I can make what I'm doing in spreadsheets, whether it's Excel, Google Sheets, whatever platform, more accessible and more inclusive for people that don't have the same access and resources to have like a professional, you know, Office 365 subscription on a PC. Hey, Al, um, before you move on, can I just get you to zoom in a bit to make sure that we yep. can all see the, the, the content? That would be awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure. Okay, um, so I'll get right into the content now and why everyone's probably here is why fill values down. So this is the first screenshot I want to share, probably something you've seen before where you have just like a regular list of data, but in column A or any column for that matter, you have empty cells that need to be filled down based on 
the previous cell that has a value. And yeah, there could we're, be we're we're still not getting a zoom effect on this one here. We're still oh. uh, still pretty small. Uh, although for for reference to for anybody that's on Teams, if you uh, if you want to zoom Teams, you can always do that by uh, hitting Control Mouse Wheel. We'll actually zoom in, and which is a pro tip for anything. Uh, but that's that's much better. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Yep, I'll try to zoom in as much and as I, I can. I, I think you're still sharing because I still see it. Can you can you see the screenshot of this? No, um, Al, Al's definitely sharing. This is Al's uh, spreadsheet, not mine. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll try to zoom in as much as possible on everything that I show here. Uh, so this is a simple list. Probably have seen something like this before, where you have a column where you have miss like empty values that need to be filled in with the previous value that has a, has a previous cell that has a value, and the key thing here is that there's varying numbers of cells that need to be filled down. So, for instance, this HZAC ticker needs to be filled in, in cell A3. This FST ticker needs to be filled in, in A5 and A6. This DEH needs to be filled in these three values. So, this snapshot might have come from um, a database perhaps that didn't have all the values filled out, probably came from like a, a view of a pivot table that was copy pasted paste special values. And so the goal is to basically fill this completely down so there's no missing values in cell in column A. So that's kind of like the main challenge that a lot of analysts that um, a lot of analysts need to work with. So I'm just gonna come out get out of this for now. So what happens if you do this manually? So I'm just kind of showing a, a GIF right now of what you would do with the keyboard, with the keyboard shortcuts. So you kind of go cell by cell, select the empty cells until you get to the next cell to value, and then you just press Control D or Command D on the Mac, and you fill the values down, and you're on your way to go. So that's pretty simple for this list because we only have like 20 rows. and you know, when I'm working with spreadsheets like this, and I don't see too many rows, and I just manually do this with with the keyboard. I like don't want to, I don't mess around with like a macro or anything. Just kind of want to get things done and get going on with my analysis. So nothing too crazy here. Um, as Ken mentioned at the top, um, this is pretty trivial with uh, Power Query. So this is a, a another GIF of Power Query. Um, you have in Power Query. Uh, values in row one and row five, and you just go to the uh, this option in Power Query to fill values down in the in the dropdown. You right click, fill fill down, and Power Query automatically fills the values down based on whatever is missing below the, the cells with the value. I think the key note about Power Query is that like you have to have null in the empty values. It can't be like a truly empty value. So you still have to do some cleaning up in your your column of data if there are non if there are non-null value. If there's an empty cell, that has to be a null in that cell, not just like a blank cell. If just, just for re just for reference on that one, Al, if, um, yeah. when when actually uh, Power Query imports that data, if it's blank, it does put in null. The the okay. worst issue is if you actually see a blank, it's not null, and then it won't fill, and that's where it really screws right. people up. Um, but yeah, for that one, it, null is just a representation of a blank value in Power Query. But uh, okay, um, one day they'll bring it to you on Mac, buddy. I promise, and then you actually <laughs> get to play with it and know for sure, right? So yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I, I know this is completely trivial in Power Query. And for those of you who are Power Query power users, like you're like, why do we need to do this? Like in in a in a script, like it's already done in Power Query. Again, not everyone has access to Power Query, you know, this person included. So um, that's why I sought to build this for the rest of us out there who are doing this manually in Excel or in Google Sheets. So let's just get into the um, BBA script demo. Um, you, I know you can't see this, this is just a script, and I'm just going to copy and paste this into Excel and um, kind of show you what this looks like. So here is my same exact list of values in Excel. And just to kind of show you what I would do in with the keyboard is I'm going here, pressing down, con Control-D, pressing down, Control-D, pressing down. So like totally doable, but if you have thousands and thousands of rows, it's obviously not a scalable solution. So what do you do? We go to uh, Visual Basic, and I'm going to zoom in here a lot as well. 
And uh, it looks like I, yeah, so I'm actually going to zoom back out just so I can copy the script. So I'm going to copy this, this little VBA script and then paste it into my, uh, my editor here. And now I have this um, subroutine fill values down, which I can assign to a macro. And um, let's actually do that and assign this to a macro really quick. So here, okay. Let's go to macros. We're just gonna call this macro fill values. And I think, oh, well, actually I probably should have created that macro first. Let me just, this down. Okay. So let's copy this, put this into my fill values macro. And there we go. So let's just run it one time just to see how it works. So I'm going to go, go back to Excel. This is my first time playing with this like Zoom feature in on the Mac. So, all right. So let's just go to macros uh fill values run and it just automatically goes through and fills the values down just like you would see in in power query nothing too crazy there so let's actually i'm going to unfortunately with a macro you can't undo so i'm just going to manually undo this um also one of the downsides compared to power query because in power query you can obviously go backwards in your transformations macros unfortunately are kind of like a one-way street which kind of sucks but that's okay all right, let's go back to my, uh, where is my, okay. Now I'm going to do this side by side because I think it's kind of interesting to see how this script actually works in conjunction with uh, Excel. And this is actually kind of how I learned how to use VBA, which is like, it, it, VBA is kind of like a very visual programming language in the sense that I can step through each of the results and see what's happening um, in my in my in Excel itself, and actually, let me, I'm gonna try to. I really want to show you guys the locals window because this kind of shows you what the um, values are of the various variables as we're going through this script. So hopefully, this I can get the zoom thing to work here. Okay, well, I think this is probably a good good level of zoom. Let me know if I need to zoom in more. All right, um, so let's just kind of go through this script line by line, and it's a pretty simple script. Um, First row is where I basically want to identify the uh, identify the last row in column A, or sorry, column B, and that's what this variable does. Last row equal um, active sheet, blah blah blah, and it just basically goes to the end of column B and finds this value, and returns this row and puts it into this variable last row, and uh, actually this VBA is strongly typed, so you have to like assign these types to all the variables. At first, define the variable, store the, the, the row object into this last row variable. And then I set my current range. I totally forget why what the variant is, but anyways, I set the current range to active sheet range A2, which starts right here, which is my first value I need to fill down, down to the last row. And last row is what I identified in B. So it will go down to row 18. So now my current range variable is all this stuff right here from A2 to A18. So that's that's great. Now we have this stored in some place. Uh, now I have, I, I create a range called new range and all I'm telling it to do is just make it a range of uh, object from that has a length of one to last row. So one to nine, 18. So I think technically it has like 17 values because it's one to 18. Um, and then then just a few more variables, dim new fill value is string, dim i is long. And this is really the, the main crux of what how the script works. So I'm looking, I'm looping through every cell in current range. And current range is this column number, column A. And I first see for every single cell in that range, is that cell empty? If it is, then I set this new fill value variable to equal to whatever is in that cell. So sorry, if, if the cell is empty and it's, 
I in this part of the if statement, the branch, I want to say that new field value contains HZAC. And then the key thing here is I set this new range, like array, which I define right here, which is this right now, just an empty range from like one through 18. I set the new range, the first first index of that range to equal to new field value. So in your mind, um, we're thinking that new range one equals HZAC. And then I just, I just iterate, uh, increment the I by plus one. Okay, so that's the first loop. Now the second loop, the since th the cell is in fact empty, it skips this part of the branch and it just goes down here. And since the new since I has incremented by one, now new range two also equals new fill value. And new fill value at this point in my loop still contains still contains H Zach. All right, so then I increment again, i equals i plus one. So now my i is at three. So what happens that i equals three? This is where, I mean, this is like kind of like the main um, reason why the script works is because once we're at i equals three, we're also at this part in current range, FST. Is empty cell that value is equal false? It is, uh, this evaluates to true. So therefore we go to this part of the branch and new fill value now equals cell doubt value, which is now FST because we're looping through the current range. New range three now changes, oh, sorry, new fill value changes now from HZAC to FST. And so now new range three equals FST. So essentially what we're doing here is new range is going to contain all the correct values in an array that we eventually want to write out or replace rather the current range with. So the current range you can think about as kind of like the incorrect range of data in my column. And then new range contains all the correct values where this one's HZAC, this one's FST, this one's FST, so on and so forth. And then this transpose, all this does is just like, I forget exactly what it does, but it basically like takes new range which contains all the quote unquote correct values and puts them into current range, which is all this stuff right here. So here's how here's how it actually looks if I kind of uh, step through everything. And I really wanna make sure I can show everything here. So I'm gonna try my best to step through everything. So I think this one is, no, it's, uh, wait, where is it? It's one of these guys, here we go. Okay, step into, uh, I'm just gonna, this up a little more. Actually, let me see if I can. Uh, we'll try it this way. Okay, so let's just try to loop through a few iterations to show how this works. So after I do all these first five lines, I always have to see like, is my are my variables being stored correctly? So you can see here, last row like we described here shows the last row count, which is eighteen. So we got that right. Dim current range, let's check out that out. So current range is right here. You can see it's like this variant object range type. If I expand this, you can see a bunch of other uh, attributes of this current range. Just because I, like people, I think a lot of times people think like, oh, like I have this current range now. Like it's just like this simple variable. But in reality, when you set the type, like you get all this extra other stuff that is contained in the, um, in the variable, which like allows you to basically do a bunch of really cool things with the actual uh, actual range of cells. And I think in cells is the, no, I remember there's some attribute that contains the actual uh, values. I think I'd be formula local. Yeah, there we go. So you can see here I have exactly 18 or 17 values. You can see here, this current range variable does indeed contain all the values in my current Excel file, which is HZAC, empty, um, empty string, FST, empty string, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that stuff is working correctly. What else do we got here? Uh, new range, just a variant from one to 18, we know that. So there's just eight, so you can see here, there's just this like 18 random, um, random empty 
like values to fill. And then finally, new new fill values empty i equals one, and cells empty. All right, so so far so good. Everything looks like it's working correctly. So now let's actually get into the fun stuff, which is the actual loop. So um, I'm going to see if I can like uh, let me zoom out just a little bit so I can. Sorry, I'm just going to minimize this window a little bit so we can see more stuff. Okay. Okay, so this is kind of like how I debug most of my my VBA scripts. So let's start stepping through. Let's step in, step into, or is it step into, step into, yeah. So let's, so it's first looking at cell.value. And if we look at open the cell, um, value should hopefully say, oh, I gotta zoom out a little bit, sorry. Uh, yeah, so you can see here the text here. Oh, actually, I'm just going to move my, my cursor around. I don't know why I keep on zooming and zooming out. Okay, yeah. So we can look here. The value of cell right now right now is HZAC. So that's working pretty much as I expected it to do. So right now, my cell.value contains HZAC, and it already passed this first condition because like, um, it's not empty. Um, so I set new fill value equals cell dot value. So make sure that works. That's awesome. New fill value equals HZAC. I equals I plus one. And we just go to the next part of the loop. Next cell. All right. Now we're basically in cell A3. Let's see what happens in this loop. Well, since A3 is empty, we totally skip this part of the branch and we just go straight here. And so now new range of I, I equals two now, equals new fill value. And we got that from the previous iteration of the loop, which is HZAC. So let's make sure that works. New range I equals HZAC. And so now we can look inside new range and you can see now it's starting to fill out kind of what I expected to, HZAC. The first value is HZAC, the second value is HZAC. So, so far, so good. So here's like the real test. Will it work with um, FST, which is cell A4 right here? Let's skip through, skip through. All right, is A4 empty? It is not. Okay, this evaluates to true. Great, let's go on. New fill value equals sell that value. So sell that value is indeed. Let's see what happens when we step through. FST. So now our new fill value has now changed values. Our new range three now equals um, FST. If I look down here into new range, you can see now like this new range is starting to look and feel like what it's going to eventually look like when I kind of paste over all these values here. And as I'm looping through, I'm just kind of loop through a few times here so I can kind of like skip through this. And kind of, since I'm hoping you're starting to see the pattern here. Step into system, do a few times, blah, 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 blah. You can kind of see now this new range object is starting to look exactly like what I want to eventually paste over. And so once everything finishes, this entire, this entire new range of values, all these empties will be filled in with the proper, um, proper values. So that's essentially what the script does. <clears throat> and I forget how to just continue. I think I just run like that. Yep, there we go. And then you can see here now everything just filled out correctly as we as we expected. So that's the script. I have the um, I think I shared this uh, this my presentation, which is in a coder doc with um, with Ken. So you can I have a, a gist that has this script if you want to take a look at it. Um, Background, I'm not a programmer. I studied marketing in college. I don't know how to like optimize things and run algorithms and stuff. I just kind of like bang my head against the wall until I get things to work. So <laughs> there's probably a million different ways for those of you who are um, classically, classically playing computer, computer science to optimize this script. Like I know there's a lot of things that can be optimized, but I just don't care. I just wanted to get it done. So there, feel free to submit like a pull request or whatever. And I'm happy to take a look.
Key takeaways. <clears throat> Here's the first thing I learned about actually when working in VBA is working with the object model of the worksheet instead of the UI directly. So, so what does that actually mean? So like when you're in VBA, I'm gonna go back to zoom in here. When you're in VBA and you're recording a macro, uh, how many times have you seen something like this? So let's, I'm just gonna record a one simple macro right now just to like test things out. Whoops, I have to zoom out a little bit. Record macro, uh, test macro. Okay. So I'm just gonna do some random stuff in my spreadsheet. Delete, and I'm just gonna take this, paste. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording. Let's take a look at what happened in my macro. In just those few little steps, you can see here how I've done things like, and this is probably for most people that start with macros, here's what they do. They, you, you range, select, you do with the selection, you clear contents, you cut, paste. These are all things that if you were to rerun this macro, it would do, you would see your cursor. And this is kind of one of the part, the magical parts of, of macros is that you see your cursor moving around every time you're in the macro and it's like copy and pasting and doing things. And you're like, cool, great. Like my macro is doing cool stuff. Like that's what I expect. But the problem is when you're working with hundreds of thousands of rows, having the cursor move around and copying and pasting over the cells and essentially using the UI of Excel is super inefficient. And it, it would, it basically is doesn't it's not scalable for larger Excel files, basically what I'm trying to say. And so what I learned is that instead of using the active sheet and the select and the selection, all these different things, you kind of got to work in the background. And people that are, again, are familiar with like uh, JavaScript and other programming languages, this is probably just not news to you. But you notice how here, I don't do a lot of like selections and copy and pasting and range. The only time I do any copy and, or any selections is up here when I'm defining my variables. And then the very last step, which is pasting the new range into the current range. All this stuff up here, this is all being done behind the scenes on the, on the object model of Excel, which you don't see in the interface. So that's why when I'm writing scripts like this, using the locals window is really important because I can see visually the, the what's stored in my variables versus seeing what's happening on the Excel file itself. So that's kind of a key concept that um, took me a while to figure out, but I realized that that's kind of like the main way to get any kind of performance from your, from your Excel files or from your, your VBA scripts. Uh, talked about the locals window already, being able to see like, uh, you know, the, the values in your variables. And then finally, I've gotten a lot of comments already on this script on how to make it more user-friendly. For instance, you'll see here in the script, it automatically assumes that what you need to uh, fill values down is in column A. But what if your stuff is in column B or column F or is in multiple columns? So that's where you could probably do something a little more, Make I could probably do something more user-friendly and maybe like allow the user to put like, oh, in cell whatever, K1, you can put the letters of the columns you actually want to fill values down with. And therefore, when you run the, the macro, this could be more user-friendly. So it's kind of like a balance of like, you know, how complicated do you want to make the script run versus like how user-friendly you want to make the script, all different kind of considerations. But again, I was trying to solve for a very simple use case of just like, making stuff fill values down <clears throat> and just like getting that done. All right, I'm just gonna move on um, unless I should stop for questions. We, we've got a lively chat going on about uh, about different things. The biggest question in this one, yeah. uh, Al, that was there was uh, was why using the arrays? Like what, what's the advantage of using an array versus just writing directly into a worksheet? So do you have a take on that? Because I mean, we do, but Curious from your your side. Um, yeah, my my take is that it just uh, for larger Excel files for like hundred thousands rows, it can be very um, time consuming. Like it takes a lot of processing power, like in your physical machine to do. And also, like as it's running, like imagine this this list was like you know 
500,000 rows long. If you're waiting for it to fill values like this, I'm just gonna, sorry, it's, I have to do this manually, unfortunately. If you're waiting for it to do fill values like this one by one, each column of each row of data one by one, that could maybe take like, I don't know, depending on how fast your computer is like 10 seconds or so. Um, and that's only one column of data. Like if you're doing this like for multiple Excel files, multiple worksheets, having the cursor move around one at a time is just super inefficient. So that's why I moving to like thinking about using arrays in your VBA script is much more performant because it all happens behind the scenes. You don't see the cursor move around. If, again, if you recall, when we ran, ran this macro, like you don't see the cursor running around. Stuff just happens because the last step, which is transposing, that happens at the very end where all the data in column A gets overwritten. So it really comes down to performance issue. And I'm sure there are some other issues too that I'm not thinking about. But for me, it ended up being a performance thing um, and just making things more optimized that way. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, cool. I'm, yeah, I'm sure there's other reasons, but in my kind of super layman's term, that's kind of what I, what I got. I think the super layman's works, and uh, and um, you'll find that we agree with you on that one. So that's all good. <laughs> all right, sweet. Let's let's move on. Uh, Google Apps Script. So um, uh, I guess I could do like a, a a poll or something. How many people use Google Apps Script? My guess is not a whole lot of folks, um, given this is like a Power Query, Power BI meetup. But I'm actually a huge fan of Google Apps Script. Most of my work now is done, is done using Google Apps Script. And I'm going to do a similar uh, I, similar thing in Google Apps Script as I did it in VBA. So got the same. Whoops, let me zoom in the uh, window instead of the. Uh, Same old-fashioned script of SPAC symbols and data, and whoops, a little too much. And how do we do this in Google Apps Script? So I come from, again before I learned Google Apps Script, I was like hardcore VBA, nothing beats it, and um, I was like, there's no way Google has something similar. And it turns out, once Google Sheet launches, Google Apps Script came not too far afterwards, and Google Apps Script is pretty much Google Sheets' version of VBA. So let's go to data. Uh, tools rather, script editor. And I already have the um I already have the the VB sorry the Google app script written out over here. And I'll just kind of walk through really quickly. Actually let's let's do this live. So let's just run the script once and then we'll see how it works. So tools, macros, fill values down. Running script, bam, done. Very similar uh, idea behind the Google Apps Script. Now, here is what I like about Google Apps Script, which um, this is kind of like he says, she says, like personal preference kind of thing. I just like the interface better when it comes to writing scripts in Google Apps Script compared to VBA at this point. So if I want to, let me see how I can do this. I, I'm just gonna do a side by side, just like I did with, um, Oops. Oh, I see this, this window zoomed in way too much. Okay, let me zoom out this one. Okay, here we go. So similar to what I did with uh, VBA, if I just kind of run through this script, it's gonna do something super similar to what we did um, in Excel. So I have, there's a few, I mean, there's a few caveats here that I won't get into um, in this part of the presentation, but if I, I'm gonna set the, a debug marker here, run a debug. And oh, I really hate this. I can't collapse this thing um, right now, I believe. But let me just zoom out a little bit and we'll have to put up with the zoom here. So defining the spreadsheet object, um, Google Suite Services, you have to define all the objects. So I'm just calling spreadsheet equals the current active spreadsheet I'm using, which is this Google Sheet right here. So let's just run through this one step at a time, just like we did previously. Current range equals uh, similar to VBA. I'm actually taking, interestingly, I'm taking everything from here to here as my current range. 
how this actually works is there's a get last row function in Google Apps Script and within the Google Sheets API, which basically looks at your Google Sheets table and smartly figures out like, okay, this guy has like this table right here from cells from columns A through F. And yeah, he has some missing values in column A, but we'll, we'll, it's okay, we'll let him have that. We can see that there's like stuff all the way down to row 18. So we're gonna say row 18 is actually like the last row in, the, in, in his spreadsheet. So that's what get last row does. Var new range, new fill value, you've seen that before. Let's just step through here. And just like the locals window in VBA, you also have like these really super rich, um, yeah, sorry, this is really gonna be hard to see with this at the zoom level. Um, you have these super rich like objects, variable looker, like variable objects you can see in this right hand uh, sidebar. And I'm not gonna walk through their script again, but you can see like it looks super similar to the VBA script. We're looking at if the current value in the current range is empty, then new fill value equals that current value, which would be like the same thing as like cell H Zach here. And similar then when we we push the new value to let me see if I can zoom this out and zoom this one if it makes it more clear. We push that new fill value to this new range. And essentially what we're doing is we're creating this, just like we did with the VBA script, new range is an array of values that look that look like the correct set of values that we need to paste into our Google Sheets. So I'm just gonna run through this loop a few times so you can see what the variables look like. Just gonna do it like three or four times so we can inspect the variables. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got. So value here, uh, this is just like the local value, local variable value, so we're not really curious about that. What's What I really care about is new range. So you can see here, new range is an array, and we ran this loop around you know, four or five times. Let's take a look to see what's an array zero. HZAC, HZAC, FST, right? That's right, because we, we have FST right here. Whoops. So my mouse is really sensitive. FST, FST, FST. So stuff is looking correct. So it's basically the same exact thing as what I did with uh, VBA. And then at the very, very end, I'm doing a current range set values new range, where new range is this, this guy right here, which contains all my quote unquote correct, correct values. And um, yeah, again, this is just, same exact idea with uh, Google Apps Script. Everything is like in the editor. It's all online and collaborative, and it's saved in the cloud, just like everything else you might be doing on like Google Cloud Platform or or what have you. So that's the, the Google Apps Script. Um, I'm gonna go back to my Prezo. All right, similarly, I have a gist here for the Google Apps Script. Happy to take any suggestions. Key takeaways. I like the GA Google Apps Script debug debugger more. I don't know, just it's color coded. It just feels more modern. And um, yeah, it just is, it works really nicely for my, my purposes and it's all mine. Similarly with VBA, I can probably make this script more user-friendly. Um, I, I know in um, Excel, I believe you can change like the menus of like the toolbar and stuff. Similarly in Google Sheets, you can also like change up all the menus here. You can like add custom menus, you can add new uh, sub menu items here. And so I could actually add like some kind of like add-on that's like my fill values down add-on and it doesn't have to live as like this like macro within this thing right here. So that's like another thing to make this more user-friendly for for Google Sheets users. Uh, what else do I got here? And then uh, this is probably the most important thing for me, which is you can link with other Google tools. So if I wanna move data between Google Docs and Google Sheets, between Gmail and Google Sheets, between Google Calendar and Google Sheets, it's all really easily done within 
the Google ecosystem because Google Apps Script is kind of like this underlying like glue between all the different applications within the Google suite of products. And just to kind of get more into like why I'm a fanboy of Google Apps Script. And to be honest, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like the in, on the inside of like Microsoft here, but like I know like the last month's um, meetup was all about Office Script. This is just like a screenshot I took from, uh, from the last month's meetup. And um, you can see here the code editor in, in Excel um, looks and feels a little more like, sorry, that's not super clear because of uh, the Zoom. It looks and feels like JavaScript, and which is kind of like what Google Apps Script is based on. So the way I kind of th see things is like, okay, VBA came out. Um, Google has Google Sheets. They kind of took a lot of features from Excel and they built in Google Sheets, but they released Google Apps Script first. So you got a bunch of like Google developers working on Google Apps Script, and then Microsoft comes along and says, wait, maybe we need to update VBA. Uh, to make it look and feel more like App Script, and so this is kind of like what the code editor looks like. You know, not sure if that's true, but I definitely think Google Office Script might might have taken a page out of Google App Script's book. I don't really know. I don't really care. But I think Google Office Script is kind of like the new VBA to Excel, um, and it looks and feels more like Google App Script. So that's just kind of like my two cents. Feel free to uh, give me your thoughts there. Uh, one other thing is I want to talk a little bit more about the spreadsheet app object. So within the realm of online applications and online tools, if you want to create a simple application and um, being able to provision compute resources for it, write a serverless function, do like refresh tokens, have API endpoints, do key security for your organization. If your organization is using Google Suite, this, the spreadsheet class, spreadsheet app class within Google Apps Script for Google Sheets basically solves all these different buckets of work in kind of like the AWS like environment. And this could be in GCP or Microsoft Azure. It solves all these things. It handles all the security. It handles all the API requests and endpoints. It handles the compute. And it just wraps it all nicely into the spreadsheet app class, which you can then use to basically pull data out of your Google Sheets and do whatever you want with them, um, which I find super powerful and why I continue to use a lot of Google Sheets for my development when it comes to um, working on stuff. Cron jobs. So if any of you have ever used the cron tab um, in like uh, in the shell, Google Apps Script has a really user-friendly cron tab where you can basically choose what function you want to run, how often you want to run it, like every hour, every day, and then you can get notified about like um, when it fails. And so this is like a super like low-code way to set up your cron for your your um, your Google Apps Script without having to like figure out like the star, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff to make the cron work. And finally, um, some app like app dev like features. Um, then this is kind of like hard to see. I'm just gonna zoom in here. So it turns out Google Apps Script is actually like a lot more powerful than you can do a lot more than just like pull stuff out of Google Sheets. So it actually can accept webhooks. So if you want to set up an endpoint for a post and get request, you can like set that up with like a Google Apps Script. Handling concurrent con concurrent requests, you can there's like a lock service. So if like hundred people are like editing the Google Sheet at the same time, or running the Google running the script at the same time, Google Apps Script has a smart way of setting up a queue for when those edits come in, so people don't overwrite each other. Um, caching. So if you have like, if you're pulling data from like a huge API and you have like, you know, multiple thousands, hundred thousands of rows in um, being pulled in from an API, you can cache that so that the next time a user is requesting that data, it's really easily accessible in the Google Apps Script cache. And finally, the one thing that I find the most powerful with Google Apps Script is URL fetching. I can, I think you can do this also in. Um, Microsoft, an Office script and also some other feature within like Power, Power Query. But I can fetch any single um, 
REST API and pull data out and then push that into some other source that's not even Google related. So like, just to give you an example, I actually did this for my own personal use case. I pulled data out of the Peloton API, which just says like, you know, stats by your Peloton ride workouts. And then I pushed it into a Coda doc, which also contains like um, a table of, it also has like this notion of like a table of, of rows. And I can push that data into that table to then do all the slicing and dicing and anal analyzing of my work. But I could also just like fetch like movie data from IMDB and push that into my Google Sheet. And you can do that all with Google Apps Script, which is pretty cool. So you basically have this like online app development editor that allows you to connect any services together that have an API. Um, so I'm obviously a fanboy of Google Apps Script, but like what demo would not be complete without downsides? No custom domains. You can't like put a custom, you can't put a Google Apps Script behind a custom domain. Every time you run the script, it has to be like from script.google.com. You obviously can't access the servers. Behind the scenes, everything is running on Google Cloud Platform on uh, on Google Compute on Google Compute machines. So that's the, the the main thing about Google Apps Script is that you can't like selectively stop and run machines. You can't collaborate uh, have collaborative access to triggers. This is like the cron job thing I was talking about here. Um, only one person can uh, edit this at a time. Um, no version control in the editor. So those of you who are more used to like writing code in, in Git and versioning control with Git, like you can't do that. It's pretty much real time, just like in a Google Doc. And then just some funky response codes when fetching content, fetching certain content. So there's some like random stuff here and there. But overall, big fan of um, Google Apps Script. Probably the biggest reason I use, continue to use Google Apps Script also is because it's free. And just going back to my uh, initial slide here, it's like trying to make this accessible. Like you can run millions and millions of rows of, of comp computation with, with Google Apps Script and not get charged a penny. And I don't know how Google plans to make money on this, but you know, once you hit some really crazy limit, then you start getting charged. And even though, even then, you get charged like pennies. So it's like, you know, so all this stuff is running on Google Google Cloud Platform servers, and I'm just I'm just waiting for the day that they start charging for Google Apps. But right now, it's free and it's wonderful. Additional resources. So um, I actually wrote a huge blog post. I mean, not huge, but just like uh, some blog post about this. Um, it's in this um, in this presentation. It's on my blog. It's like it's full values down. I kind of walk through basically what I walked through today in terms of like how I programmed the VBA script, um, did the Google Sheet thing, how to set it up, blah blah blah. So you can read that. Did a YouTube video tutorial on it. Um, these uh, so some of the some of the slides and data points I shared about um, why I like Google Apps Script. I actually presented this at uh, Developer Week this year. Uh, it was a couple of weeks or months ago and just talked about how I use Google Apps Scripts to automate a lot of my workflows um, beyond just spreadsheets and Google Sheets. Like This is getting into, like again, my Peloton use case where I'm taking data out of an API and pushing it to some other random third-party service that will accept the data request. And with that, just want to say thank you for listening to me uh, jabber on about Google Apps Script, Excel VBA. I, I know this is a probably a little more into Google Apps Script than, than you would like, um, but I highly recommend giving Google Apps Script and Google Sheets a try. And um, hopefully uh, you can become a convert like I have to uh, the Apps Script ecosystem. So happy to take any questions from there. Cool, thanks, Al, appreciate that. Um, if there are any questions that uh, people wanna throw in the chat or if they wanna unmute and uh, and ask, uh, please feel free to uh, to do so. Um, probably the easiest thing to do if you do wanna actually come on voice is to just use the uh, little um, icon to raise your hand and then we can call on you uh, for that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll say from my side, I find this uh, I find this interesting. I mean, I haven't played with Google Apps Script at all, um, personally, Al, and it's uh, it's interesting to see that uh, the debugging suite in there is actually uh, quite comprehensive. Um, I, I will say I had to laugh when you said that you feel that the uh, that the experience in Google Apps Script is more modern than VBA because I'm thinking, well, yeah, it's had 20 years to evolve. VBA hasn't been touched since then, so uh, that kind of makes sense. But uh, 
but no, it's it's uh, it's cool stuff. Yeah, um, and I, I'm sure people that are hardcore still VBA users like you get accustomed to the way your locals windows locals windows looks and looks and feel and it's hard to pay, take people away from that but um, i'm all about kind of like using the tools that um you know help my my customers my users my co my colleagues and um if it's google apps script great if it's vba great if it's something else um it's all about kind of just being in a platform that makes the most sense for the use case. Oh, absolutely. No, I mean, this is the beautiful thing that we have today, right? I mean, multiple tools, multiple options for the right scenario and, and whatnot. And uh, I think it's, um, I think it's obvious today that, uh, that Excel is still, or the Excel team is playing catch up with their, uh, their online automation language um, in, in office scripts. I mean, they're, they're working and trying to uh, to build an awful lot of stuff and Google's obviously beat them out of the gate on that. So it'll be interesting to see how that evolves as well and and whether this ends up being a uh, a parody kind of thing but uh but yeah it's very interesting for sure um i don't see any other questions that are are coming in at this point um but uh yeah so i mean let's uh let's say thanks very much for the presentation um i'm very curious to see if uh, if you do end up actually playing with the office scripts and eventually end up coming back to do a uh, a contrast and compare between office scripts and google scripts i see that being the, the future of where this conversation ends up going uh, so and, <laughs> yeah I'm, and, I'm i'm pretty sure it's like going to be really similar um given that uh I think la I think last month the off the presenters that talked about Office Script they, they were using it in off Excel Online if I if I'm not mistaken right Yep that's correct yeah 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 so chances are they're also running all that stuff on obviously Azure compute resources and um, it's probably has a similar look and feel when you're running things so as you saw with Google Apps Script like it's not as quick and snappy when you step through your your code whereas in vba it's like instantaneous you know because it's all in your local machine um but i'm sure like some of those like little nits about google apps script probably also will show up in in office script too yeah well that yeah. that's a that's a byproduct of being a web web is always slower than what's on desktop but i think right. where where microsoft will potentially have the exam or the the advantage on this one should they decide to go this route which we hope they do is the the intent for office script is that it's or they're supposed to run cross platform so eventually hopefully they'll actually bring it so that you're using the same code language in desktop as you are so it you know eventually um, once it's you know, got a feature comparity with VBA, that, that it would become the replacement, but it's not there yet. It's got a long, long way to go, in, in my opinion. So, right. Um, I see. Uh, I see. Um, Brent has uh, has made a comment here that the Google Apps Script add-ins are much easier to deploy than Excel web add-ins. Um, you know, yeah, for sure. The Excel web add-in story has <laughs> has, a, has a story that needs to be better written. I think in that long term. But as I say, I think Microsoft still developing in, in that area. So hopefully that will change over time, but uh, yeah, but yeah, it'll well, be neat. I'm excited to see how the office script, uh, that resource will actually connect all the different Microsoft services together because now you're thinking, I'm thinking out loud here, but it's like, if you have Microsoft project, if your company is using Microsoft project and there's some, I'm pretty sure there's an online version of that. Now you're thinking about, okay, maybe I can take data and sync it away, you know, from my office, my Microsoft project uh, workspace into a Google Sheet, so that some other team can see what's going on with Microsoft Project, but they don't want to go into Microsoft Project. Um, similar to how Google Apps Script is tying together all the different uh, applications within the Google Suite services. So, uh, you know, thinking about Google uh, Microsoft Tasks, Microsoft Project, maybe even like Word Online. Um, all those things kind of become really interesting to integrate with each other. No, oh, for sure. The, the truly crazy one is when you build a Power App, actually link it back through Power Automate, and you can actually do mobile apps that link into a spreadsheet on the back end. The, that's where it gets really wild. <laughs>